We'll go ahead and call tonight's uh, regular city council meeting to yeah. order. And for tonight's invocation, I've asked Alderman Heverling to please do the honor. Father God in heaven, we uh, first of all thank you for your presence with us just now. We ask that uh, you guide our discussion and our decision making tonight and can continue to bless us in all those things that, uh, that we do. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to uh, serve the people of Taylorville. And uh, we pray to you that uh, all the employees are safe in their workplace. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Roll call, please. Larry Budd? Here. Tom Burrow? Here. Ray Dorchinette? Here. Rob Heverling? Here. Bruce Jones? Here. Ray Coots? Here. Mark Voda? Here. Earl Walters? Here. All eight aldermen present. First thing we have is a motion to we'll utilize the second. omnibus vote for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting listed on tonight's agenda under title omnibus vote designation. Alderman Dorchinez, second by Alderman Jones. Discussion or comment? Hearing none, roll call. Tom Burrow? Yes. Ray Dorchinette? Yes. Rob Heverling? Yes. Bruce Jones? Yes. Ray Coots? Martin Yes. Walters? Yes. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Okay, the minutes will be approving will be the minutes of the regular meeting held August 4th, 2014. Minutes of the Personnel Committee meeting held August 7th, 2014. Minutes of the Emergency Services Committee meeting held August 7th, 2014. Minutes of the Water Environmental Committee meeting held August 14th, 2014. And minutes of the Lake Airport Committee meeting held August 14th, 2014. I'd entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So, second. Alderman Walters, second by Alderman Kuntz. Discussion or comment? Roll call, please. Attorney Dorchinette? Yes. Rob Kevley? Yes. Bruce Jones? Yes. Ray Kuntz? Yes. Martin Voda? Yes. Earl Walters? Yes. Larry Budd? Yes. Tom Burrow? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Okay, the first thing we have is, uh, deals with the appraisal agreement with the industrial appraised, appraisal company. This is basically going to be used for various things, uh, our insurance and, and audit purposes. So we entertain a motion to approve that agreement. So much. Alderman Budd. Second, Second by Alderman Walters. Go ahead with your question. Uh, my question, uh, Your Honor, I spoke briefly with uh, City Clerk Peabody. It's on addendum number one. If you gentlemen will turn to that, it's page nine. And this is talking about the property locations. And under airport, they mentioned old administration building. We no longer have an old administration building unless it suddenly reappeared. So we need to make sure that we're not charged for doing anything with the old administration building at the airport. Well, the appraisal should come in less then. That's what I think, yes. Thank you. I have a question, Mayor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Rocky. I was going to just to point out on page seven, when you take your vote, give some direction to the mayor, if you will, as to whether or not uh, your approval includes option one and option two, <coughs> which is additional funding. And I talked to the city clerk, I don't think you want to do that, but no. you need to just approve the uh, actual base contract. And you might ask for some clarification because it shows uh, a payments 50% prior to April 30th and 50% thereafter, but nowhere does it say upon a, a start of work or completion of work. So you might want to clarify that, just handing over some money without no start date or completion date specified. Okay. Alderman Jones. Uh, yes. My only question was on, uh, the, again, addendum one, uh, properties to be appraised. Under, uh, <coughs> on page 10, where it talks about Lake Taylorville, um, it's got the silt dams on there, but it doesn't have the dam itself. Does, is the dam itself included as part of the lake, or is it an individual uh, piece of property because we have to have the emergency action plan for the dam breaking. So th that's my, my question. Sure. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. 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 I think the dam's part of the city. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But I believe, do we, do we also have separate insurance on it as well? Well, the, that's insurance. This is okay, just to do the appraisal. appraisal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, we have to have, have, to have separate so you insurance, have to but I, I'll call yeah. and answer that's that good question, question tomorrow. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Let me get a damn <laughs> Roll call, please. Rob Heverly? 
Yes. Bruce Jones? Yes. Ray Coos? Yes. Mike Boda? Yes. Earl Walters? Yes. Mary Budd? Yes. Sean Berto? Yes. Ernie Dorchinez? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Okay, next we have the resolution with Credit Collection Partners Debt Collection Agreement. Entertain a motion to approve that resolution. So Alderman Kuntz. I'll second that with a question. Alderman Walters. Go ahead with your comment. Question. I think we covered this, but I want to be sure that we are clear on this. That's on page 7, if you don't want to refer to page 7. Is everyone comfortable with G? 3G, it says, upon request from time to time, the city may allow CCP to endorse check payments made payable to the city, but which are received by CCP. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, I, think I, I check with the city treasurer and the city clerk's office, mm -hmm. and also Mr. Bonister yes, from uh, the Credit Collection Partners is here this evening, and he informed me, I believe, and Rick, if you want to come on up, you're back here behind me. Yeah. Uh, they do that for almost all your it's clientele. Really yeah, we've been collecting water bills for the city. Uh, thanks for having me here, by the way, um, for, for decades now, and, and that's been a common practice. We've been doing that for decades, um, and uh, we're actually doing collection work for about 12 counties across the state here right now, and you wouldn't believe what you see in the takes of the order of, you know, a lot. It, CCP is in there, but City Taylor Bill will be in there and, and other things, but, uh, and it doesn't happen all that frequently. It's just, of common practice in our line of work. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If, right. I, if I could, Mayor, just to briefly City summarize attorney. where we're at. It's, sure. it's a little bit different from what the resolution that you initially approved. Uh, Rick and I spent quite a bit of time. We've spoken with the uh, circuit clerk and the deputy clerk. I've also spoke with the presiding judge here to, to kind of make sure we get all the uh, T's crossed and I's dotted. What we're envisioning doing, the easiest way now, before we were talking about all ordinance violation cases that predated January 1, 2012. Uh, we found that an easier way to do this with their software, with the, with the clerk's office, is to uh, pull all cases that have had activity for within the last six months. Everything else gets shipped over to the credit collection partners. Uh, apparently, uh, he's talked with the software people uh, the uh, city clerk's office can make that change without any fee or cost to anybody that they'll tag all the OV ordinance violation designation cases to the to the clerk's office for any cases over six months and then they will go over to credit collection partners the second thing that we found out we think we're right but uh, there's not a lot of case law out there is initially we're just going to transfer cases that are uh, within seven years of entry of a judgment uh, we're a little bit different than the county. Uh, these are not; th uh, these are what they call quasi-criminal uh, type cases. They have a civil uh, nature to them. In other words, it's preponderance of the evidence, not beyond a reasonable doubt. If you're strictly talking about a civil judgment, you only have seven years to enforce that judgment, unless you go to the expense of reviving it for an additional seven years, and you keep doing that until you, 20 years has expired. And I don't think you want to go to the expense of uh, for a 450 dollars fine going in and reviving these things are over seven years old. So in terms of numbers, I think uh, at a, a quick look that Rick and I looked at, get about 120, 125,000 of debt. Uh, probably you still would have about 100,000 within that seven year window, we think. Uh, so that's the safest way uh, to, to, uh, to move that along, I think. So I think a conservative, if I could just sure. up that, a, a conservative estimate would be perhaps a 10% liquidation over the first 12 months. An aggressive one might be near 20% over the first 12 months. So I'll just give you an idea of what we can kind of bring back to you here in the near term. And the other thing that we've worked out, I think, with the clerk, <coughs> is that she has no problem with it, is to uh, do some other uh, changes in their software program so as it gets collected. Now keep in mind, when we go in and get a $250 fine, the, the court assesses, adds on that $200 more. Of that $200, the city only gets $25 for a prosecution fee. The rest of it is divvied up for, it goes to the state, some to the county, it, it goes everywhere. What our position was that, look, we are, these are city ordinances. When the money comes in, if you get a $450 case and only $200 is paid at, at, up front, we want our fine money first. And then uh, we want our $25 prosecution fee. Then after that, if, we can, if they're able to collect some, 
then uh, you get your cost. And so far, uh, at least verbally, they're okay with that. We're going to have to make some. They're going to have to make some adjustments in software. Keep in mind that whatever case he gets, he's going to tag on, or his company is going to tag on 30 percent. That's not going to be the city's responsibility or liability. It's that defendant will have to pay an additional 30 percent to do that. The other thing you'll see in this agreement that uh, will probably bring back to you before the first of the year <coughs> is this Illinois Local Debt Recovery Program. That is a uh, kind of a new thing on the, on the horizon here within the last two years, I believe. Right. Hasn't really taken off a whole lot, but it is a program that if we sign an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the state of Illinois, Comptroller's office, I believe, uh, they can tag it, and it can, and, and if there's uh, any Illinois income tax refunds, not federal, it, it can be intercepted and applied to our fines and money that's owed to us. In those types of instances, uh, his fee is reduced to 10% by state law, and that will be, again, tacked on to the principal amount that's owed. <coughs> so it's kind of a win-win for us. Uh, he seems excited about it because perhaps, uh, unlike the county, violations who many times are transient folks who come through here and get a speeding ticket and go on down to you know St. Louis or what have you a lot of our, our ordinance violations are people that live here mm -hmm. so uh, that's another avenue for him to try to collect and, and uh, maybe get some uh, tags of his income tax refund so uh, this agreement says that if you choose to do that later he is going to comply and go forward with it we're going to go and, and dig some more and see. Uh, there's not a whole lot on the website if you go. It just tells you there's the program. There's a one-page brochure, so uh, we're going to do some more research on it, but it may be something that uh, will be good for the city and save you money and make you some money. So, uh, Thank you. Any other questions about this agreement? Alderman Heverly. Just a, a clarification. Um, the fee, say if it's a $200 OB fine. Sure. And it, it's applicable under this LDRP. So your fee is going to be <coughs> 20 bucks, and they're going to pay 220 Correct, yes. And then if it's the other where it's 30%, it'd be 260 That's correct. Okay. okay. And, and if, it, it's a good question because if it's say that we have a, a 250 ordinance violation, $200 cost, he adds his 30%. He works out a deal, the guy pays 100 bucks, he or she. Of that $100, um, 70 some percent of that goes allocated to your fine, 20 some percent of that will be uh, allocated for his, towards his 30 percent. And once his 30 percent is collected, then we go to uh, our 25 percent prosecution fee and then the cost to the, to the county. Okay. So uh, as I said, unless they, uh, uh, and I don't think they will, we've got a verbal approval that's okay with the uh, circuit clerk that she's okay with it. Correct, yes. So, um, and he's on, uh, you know, I made him cut his finger, raise his hand, <laughs> blood. He promises to do everything according to law. <laughs> so <laughs> we've named some of the statutes in here, and he's assured us. And I think yeah, this little business has been around for 70, 80 years, and yeah. not once has there been an FDCPA violation. Or we've got checks and balances in place. We we can't. It's very, very difficult to break the law. Like we can't call on Sunday. Our system won't let us. You know, little things like that. So there's a ton of checks and balances in place. A plus rating, Better Business Bureau, the whole nine yards. Thank you. Any other comments before we vote? Roll call, please. Chris Jones. Yes. Ray Coots. Yes. Mark Voda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Webb. Yes. Tom Bertle. Same. Ray Bochner. Yes. Bob Kepler. Yes. Uh, motion passes seven in favor, none against, and one abstention. Okay. Thank you. Earlier tonight, we had the uh, plan commission meet, so I'd ask uh, Mr. <coughs> Hauser, could you please address the council? Thank you, Governor.
Thank you. Could I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Of the Planning Commission. Alderman Dorchnez, second by Alderman Bertel. Discussion or comment? Comment. Alderman mm -hmm. Bertel. Um, I'll support this. The main reason being we have a process in place that protects our community from growing in the indirect or the wrong direction, which would be the planning and zoning, the plats, everything, and the final say by the city council to proceed with this. So changing to a C2, uh, it is the only way we can move forward on growing our city. And with the checks and balances that are in place with the committees, we should be able to uh, maintain and grow the city in the proper direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Budd. During the, the planning <coughs> meeting, I said I would oppose this, but talking to Mr. Seno afterwards, he addressed my concerns, so now I will support it. Any other questions, comments? Roll call, please. Ray Coots. Yes. Martin Voda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ron Georgianis. Yes. Rob Terribly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. <coughs> Mayor votes. And the Mayor votes yes, so 9-0. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, the next thing on the agenda, we have a uh, the ordinance uh, to rezone property at the intersection of Lincoln Trail and Bypass 48 from R2 to C2, and any uh, other motions relating that the Planning Commission comments or recommendations uh, they may have made. But uh, Alderman Walters, Sale right. Alderman Bertle, additional discussion. Hearing none, roll call. Martin Voda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ray Georgianis. Yes. Rob Terribly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Coons. Yes. Mayor Bush. <coughs> <Mayor Bates. coughs> yes. Nine to zero. Okay, next we have an ordinance authorizing the city to enter into certain annexation agreements, this being the water annexation agreements. Um, Alderman Walters. Second. Second Alderman Bertle. These were the uh, properties uh, mentioned tonight at the public hearing. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ray Dorchinez. Yes. Rob Terribly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Coons. Yes. Martin Voda. Yes. Larry Budd. Motion passes 9 to 0. <laughs> Just give me a second. <laughs> 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 okay. Next, we have a motion to allow waterfowl hunting on Lake Taylorville for the 2014 2015 season with the same rules as last year and deer hunting, bow only on Lake Taylorville for the 2014 season, except for October 11th through the 13th due to youth hunting on the north end of the lake with the same rules as last year. This is contingent upon receipt of all necessary documents. I'll go ahead and make that motion, Your Honor. Alderman Second. Voda. Second by Alderman Jones. Discussion or comment? Roll call, please. Larry Budd. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ray Dorchinez. Yes. Rob Terribly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Coons. Yes. Martin Voda. <coughs> yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Motion mm -hmm. passes 8 to 0. Next, we have a motion to allow youth hunting at Lake Taylorville uh, on October 11th through the October 13th with the same rules as last year, also contingent upon the receipt of all necessary documents. I'll go ahead and make that motion, Your Honor, also. Alderman Voda, in a second. second Alderman Walters, discussion or comment? Roll call. Sean Bertle. Yes. Yes. Bruce Yes. Rob Terribly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Coons. Yes. Alderman Voda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. That motion passes 8 to 0. Okay, next we have a motion to authorize the city's demoli demolition of 717 East Vine uh, Street property in reliance uh, upon Theola Brackett's affidavit and consent to demolish the property. I'll gladly make that motion. Alderman <laughs> Second. Second by Alderman Bertle. Discussion or comment? Your Honor, if I may. Please. Uh, I asked Mr. Brackett to be here tonight. He has been nothing but cooperative. Uh, with my office, with Mr. Calvert. Uh, he was in my office today. The, the actual original of this document, signed document, has been deposited with the city clerk's office. Uh, this is one that uh, uh, you've gotten an email from me as to what my arrest this may entail, but with this document and this motion tonight, you're free to go out tomorrow and demolish the property. And uh, actually, Mr. Brackett wanted me to extend his thank you to the city uh, for doing this for his family. Uh, I certainly want <coughs> to have a big thank you to him for allowing us to do this, saving us a lot of time and effort uh, to take care of this property. So, okay. Any other comments? Alderman Coons. I'd just like to thank the city attorney for working on this. I know it wasn't a very right. easy task. And George Calvert for his part and everybody else involved in the brackets, especially uh, as, as you know, 
our main concern is the safety of the people in the area, you know, because it is, it is a safety hazard, and that's my number one concern, as well as a lot of the other aldermen, you know, and right. that have worked on this, so thank you again. Well, thank you for that, but uh, it's hard to say no to Mr. Calvert, as everyone knows. Is he behind me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's that strong old approach. Right. approach. Alderman Jones. Um, this does not give the city the property, though. It does not. In essence. It's I, simply, I just want to make that it, clear because some, somebody thought we ended up with the property, and we do not end up with the property, right. even though we're, we put the money into it. That is correct. That's kind of the trade-off. But as I understand it, uh, by design, I think the Brackett family has not paid the taxes for one year, and they'll probably be let not – if they don't pay in the next year, then the city always has that option to come in and, and pay the taxes and acquire the property if Mr. Brackett family would like to do that. Yeah. But so you might let – you know, defer to what they what might want to do. Mm -hmm. This just allows you to get in, to tear it down, and to, uh, you know, remove everything off the property. Any other comments before we vote? Roll call, please. Ernie Dortinez. Yes. Bob Cavalier. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Kuntz. Yes. Mark Florida. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. Tom Bertle. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Brings us to city attorney update. <coughs> I'm going to get my list down to maybe six or seven items Good. quickly, if I may. <laughs> uh, number one, you have received an email from me. Uh, we've received a reply from the attorney for uh, Ameren concerning the easement. Uh, you all have a copy of that uh, letter, so uh, I'll be dealing with them, and I think we're, we're on the right track uh, to, uh, to get that uh, finalized. Uh, I give you my suggestions in that email, namely, is uh, I don't know whether you want to go out and get another appraisal, if you're going to do that, or do a drive-by, what have you. That's your choice from a business standpoint. I think my, ease, my letter was suggesting that uh, whatever debris removal we require on our 75-foot strip, you want to make sure it's done on the adjoining property strip to site because otherwise they're uphill, it comes on our property and, and hopefully would not get to our silt dam. Uh, that was the, uh, the concern that I had. Second thing that I want to bring up is on your uh, – I gave you a copy of a paragraph that I drafted. Uh, the mayor and I attended a uh, county uh, committee meeting a week or so ago, I believe, uh, and I'm pleased to uh, report that they unanimously, the committee did, approve the language for an amendatory change to the enterprise zone agreement that it will allow you to do the kind of things that uh, you folks envision to do. It's got to go to, uh, it, it's subject to the approval of the state's attorney. Uh, they have not had an opportunity to review that yet. No one wants this language, if it is approved, to diffuse or to defeat the integrity of the enterprise zone agreement as it stands, and I think that's one of the things the state attorney is going to check to make sure that uh, we can amend this language, and I think we can. What this uh, paragraph would allow the city to do, assuming the county goes forward and, and agrees to it, we make the necessary change to the Enterprise uh, Zone Cooperative uh, mm -hmm. Intergovernmental Cooperation Agreement, is to allow you, in addition to what that, uh, that Enterprise Zone allows, is to allow you guys to uh, do additional real estate tax rebates, sales tax rebates telecommunication tax rebates, utility tax rebates, franchise taxes, water, sewer services rebates, or, you know, uh, free service, fire protection service, franchise fees, building permits, or those kinds of, of economic incentives, rebates, or reimbursements that allow you to encourage businesses, even if they're in the enterprise zone, uh, to uh, uh, get some benefit and encourage them to, to come forward. So we'll hope that uh, it'll pass through and within a – there in due course, we will bring back to you an amendment to get this job done. Well, no, you've been working on it, and, and tonight Victor Pop is also working them, he told me. Okay, so good. between both of you guys, I think we should get, be able to get it done. All so. right, well, that's, that's good news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wasn't on my agenda, but okay. Victor uh, <laughs> the other thing is is that uh, uh, I think, I don't know if you all, if you know about it, but we do have a meeting scheduled with Illinois EPA, the mayor and I, and uh, I think Alderman Volta, we, uh, uh, unfortunately, won't be able to be there for uh, personal reasons, but uh, uh, I think um, that's at 9 o'clock next Wednesday, August 20th. Anyone is welcome to come. I'll be there. there. The Illinois EPA attorney will be there and the same officials that the mayor talked to before. Mr. Laker is supposed to be there. I think he's going to invite his consultant engineer. This Wednesday. 
this one. What did I say? This one's the one. We said next Wednesday. Okay, I'm sorry. It actually, it's the next Wednesday that's, that's coming. But that's right. Well, yeah, I was correct then. So <laughs> Technically, yes. Nine o'clock. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get something done. So we'll have to report back to you. Um, I passed out this evening, and I think Pam says she's already given it to you for your ordinance committee on Thursday, the building permit ordinance that uh, Mr. Calvert uh, was uh, at my door every day for a week wanting to change. And I think we got him pleased. So it, it's something that, I, that he would recommend, and I, I think we've got it to recommend for you too. You also got some emails from me on your fire department. Remember we talked about the city of Charleston? Mm -hmm. I have taken a look at the form. I've redrafted it. I've, I've given it to my crews. I don't know if you see her behind me tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he's also uh, sent me, the, as I requested, I think I got it today, the word uh, document, word format for the actual cooperation agreement with my suggested paragraph. So have had a chance to visit with Mike about my suggestions. If he's okay with it, then we'll probably bring something back to you folks to uh, uh, change that form. What it's designed to do is to, when they make a run, that whoever's hurt, if they're able to sign, or whoever is uh, their guardian or significant other, will be signed a document allowing the fire department to uh, uh, not only treat the individual, but will any records pertaining to that service call, we can give it to Charleston Fire Department and their debt collectors without violating the federal HIPAA laws. And that's what that's designed to do. And then the other paragraph I put in the agreement would obligate uh, the city of Charleston to do what I've put in here for the credit pr uh, uh, protection partners to comply with all those laws that may come up in that type of service. So uh, subject to my crew's uh, approval, you'll be seeing that soon. I also saw that you're talking about some fire training agreements uh, for a couple of uh, businesses uh, or places in town. You have one in, on file. I think it. I think I drafted that back in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't I say just go ahead and use that training agreement uh, for now. And if there's any problem with it or get some resistance to people signing it, we can take a look at it. But I don't think there's any reason for me to redraft it at this point. Well, the, the question, uh, have, have any of the, the regulations or laws changed since we did this? This is, this is training among different uh, villages and municipalities with us. Unless I'm thinking of something different. We're going to invite them, yes, but it should apply to the same as we were saying. Okay. And, and, and the agreement is kind of one sided, well, it is one sided in the <laughs> city's favor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when this came up some years ago, uh, these were folks that had houses that uh, should be demolished, but perhaps didn't have the financial funds at that time to do so. So they came to we came to them and said, okay, we'll do, we'll tear it down if you hold us harmless, and you give us permission, and we're not responsible. We'll do it for training. And I think people people were eager to sign that because otherwise they'd have to demolish it anyway. Now, if you've got some other businesses uh, that are not in that situation, then we may need to tweak that document a little bit. I know one of the do I know one of the buildings that you're looking at, the old bowling alley, uh, is probably not on the horizon because the people that are going to be buying it, we haven't closed on it yet. So uh, I know there will be no signing of that document at this time. And whether we'll sign it in the future, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I can talk to you now about the Champley lease issue, or I can wait till it comes up in committee. I've got something to say about that. So I can wait until that comes up and we can talk about it. But other than that, is there any questions? Question or anything else for the city attorney? Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to mayor updates. And I uh, really don't have much myself, but I, I uh, do have some people out there in the audience I'd like to call on. Um, first, the update on the uh, the building up there on the square. And I see Dustin came in. So, Dustin, if you would, if you don't mind, please just kind of stand or or sit. As far as I'm concerned, just uh, just kind of let people know what's going to happen over the next week or so, and, and where you're going with that project. Um, well, the, uh, the insurance got finalized, uh, came through, uh, so we are going to, we are going to rebuild. Um, obviously you've seen that they have got the cleanup started, uh, for the most part everything's off the, off the street, uh, the shoring has begun, they're waiting on Shores that they had to order, and it should, I, I believe they said 
You had mentioned uh, at the last meeting and everything else, if there's some kind of document or, or thing he has as far as the uh, structural integrity of the building, that you would be willing to share that. Is that right. still? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any, any information that I get, I, I'll okay. give to you guys. Okay. Okay. Alderman Walters. Thank you. Uh, the question that I wanted to ask, and, and uh, various people around the <laughs> ask me this, maybe some of the other aldermen, I think what we're, we're, we're getting pressured into trying to make a decision as to open up the streets again. And I've told everyone, as far as I know, until we get something in writing from a structural engineer that says it's safe to open that up, we do not want to accept the liability. So we do positively need something in writing from a structural engineer that says that building is safe so that we can take those barricades down and open up the traffic. Uh, and that, that's what I'm looking for. And I would think that would come from, um, and again, I'm not sure because I've been out of the business of insurance for quite a few years, it would come from the insurance company structure engineer, not necessarily for the one that you would hire. Okay. I'll uh, I'll check into that. Um, as far as my my mason, you know, which is now in charge, and you know, basically once his hands got on it, his insurance and stuff takes into effect. I mean, just just like you know, once he's touched it, then it's his baby. You know, it's, it's so he said bring the barricade then give us enough room, you know, if we could just have the uh, the parking spots. That's what he needs to run the list on. So, I mean, I have no problems trying to find that information out for you. I'll, I'll do my best to see what I can do. But uh, as far as my Mason, uh, he said all he needs is the barricades moved in to the parking spots. So. Alderman <coughs> I was asking for the last meeting, and, and I apologize for that, but the, the question I have, and I, I've got a little bit of background in building, the fact that that tent is still on there, has there been any discussion between the engineers and the insurance company and you or the mason that what might be behind there or what's not behind there, in this case, since uh, some of it fell off? I can't believe that they've done an assessment just from the inside of the building. Uh, obviously, you can see that the front's missing from the inside of the building, but any other damage that would be back there underneath the plaster is going to be very difficult to see so what kind of mechanism is there in place that if they take the tent off say next week or the week after and there's some other kind of damage back there what what's going to happen then is the insurance got some kind of plan b or do you know or can you fill us in no, on that i mean as far as as far as that goes i mean it's just like any building you're not going to take the plaster off of every right. every building out here to see what's behind the plaster i mean there's there's no on the on the part that's still good, okay, or the the, the other side, okay. Uh, over the shoe store is what you're talking about. Over okay. the shoe store, there's no separation off the front, and there's no major cracking in the walls. Okay, that gives them the sign that that side is intact. Uh, the other side, I mean, you can see. It's all the way up to the third floor. There's just a little bit left on that one side. It's, I mean, so as far as that goes, it's all gone. Okay. I, I, mm -hmm. I still feel like that, that to do an assessment, I, I can't believe that they've done it and completed it and got some kind of engineer to sign off that he's come, there's nothing else wrong behind that tent. I just, so it, it, I'm concerned for you that, you know, it sounds like you've got a good plan in place here and you've got the, the, the masons on site and all that, and then we get this tent off, and if there's a problem on that side, or even for that matter, on, on the... That's, uh, that's one of those things. North. If we take the tent off and we see a problem, then we're going to plan B, or we don't, I don't have a plan B, but I mean, obviously, <coughs> if I've got to tear that rest of that front off, then it'll probably be a tear down. Okay. Financially, couldn't take you know and re redo everything. But as far as from what I got from my insurance is in engineer they hired, they said it's a, a rebuild. And from the mason that I hired, he said the damage is on this side. Now on the good side.
side, I do plan. We're, everything's going back to original. Okay, we're gonna we're tearing all the front off, and any missing bricks, it's all it's gonna be tuck pointed and, and refurbished. If that's what if that's one of the concerns you have. Uh, but no, I'm just I'm I'm hoping your plan works out. I, I would like to see it go back. I'm just concerned that that tan's on there, <coughs> and they haven't taken it off yet to do their assessment. I know that you're not in charge of that, but I just wondered if they had any conversations about it. Everybody, they don't seem to be worried about everybody it. Everybody that's looked at it has given me the thumbs up, so I mean, I, I, okay. I have no reason to believe that they don't know what they're doing. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Bud. Are, is there any intent on the north wall to take some of that tent off to be able to look to make sure that that is, is safe? Because the way it is now, you can't see anything up there. Uh, yes, I, I mean, I'm going to go a little far, a little further off the edge because everything's got to be tied into the edge. So, I mean, that will be. But we're not taking any of the other 10 loose to take a look at the wall to see if it's is structurally sound. To the east, on east, on the north wall. Structurally sound? I'm well, my concern is. With that tin, if there's anything loose on that side, there's no way of knowing. And with the front coming down, the side could be the same. You want me to take it off? I'll take it off. I think it needs to be, at least some of it needs to be taken loose to check it to make sure okay, that well it's. There's quite a few other buildings up there we need to take the tin off of that to check it. So you want me to do it? Okay. I, I'm just concerned. I mean, the businesses across the street are even concerned. Here to come in and tell us if it's okay. So, right. you know, that's and, and, I, and I think that's what we're after. I think we're all on the, on the same page. It's just hard for us to visualize how a structural engineer, you know, with that hidden stuff there, we don't know how he would come to that conclusion. And maybe he's got a way that'll explain to us and say, "Listen, I've, I've done a thousand of these buildings. I have no concerns with that building." And if he could put something like that in writing, that'll that'll give us, you know. A, a, a better feeling. Alderman Heverly. And, and to that, do, do you have a timeline when you think we could have something in writing from a structural engineer about the integrity of the building and the possibility then of removing those barricades? Is that going to be uh, one week, two <coughs> weeks? Within probably two weeks, I mean, I'll have hmm. my engineer, but as far as the And, and let, let's face it, uh, I mean, we've got to be realistically, I would imagine, and Rocky, you've been in the business long enough to uh, work these kind of situations, I would be surprised if the insurance company would come forward and say, hey, oh, yeah, we'll give you everything we have here. Uh, it would just be like, uh, you know, put out a guarantee there, and, and, and they're not in that business. So uh, I, I, I would be shocked if they would say, yeah, we're going to stand behind it, we tell you that building's fine. They'd probably say, we're Mr. Clark's, uh, we, we work for him. He's, he's our client, and, you know, we'll share the information with him to a certain degree. And, and, and I think they will probably tell him, you know, be careful what you're throwing out there. So, I mean, I, I, don't you well, think that's what's going to happen, Rocky? The insured has a duty to cooperate with the insurance company. Right. So, it, so he or she does not jeopardize the coverage. Right. Having said that, the insured, is, I would think, is entitled to all investigative material. And if mm -hmm. the insured wants to share that with others, the, the insured could, mm -hmm. assuming he wasn't subject to criticism and not cooperating with his insurance company about it. So it's kind of a fine line, but I think mm -hmm. he's said he's going to ask, mm -hmm. and uh, let's hope he's a, a good talker and he can get mm -hmm. the job done and mm -hmm. give it to us. Alderman mm -hmm. Bertle. I just want you to leave here. I'm on your side. I think rebuilding this building is going to be the best bet for the looks of the square. And because the scenario that goes through my head is a, a gravel parking lot, that building's tore down. If you build something new on there, it's not going to fit in with the establishment that's there now. So I'm hoping this works. I'm, and, and my concern is only for safety. So I'm not trying to badger you, and I'm not and trying I'm to. Saying, yeah, and, and I'm I not hope, trying to. I hope everybody here knows yeah. that I am trying my hardest. Yeah. And, 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 and it sounds like you are. You know, I'm trying to give you everything I can, and, and I want it safe just as much as the next guy. And so, please. 
I, I will say, and of course you, all the aldermen got it, mm -hmm. I, I did put out a memo to them. I, I want to give you kudos for the way you're handling this. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of young men, a lot of old men that, that wouldn't be as responsible as you have been in this situation. I mean, we've all been in situations where we can't find the guy. George deals with it every single day. Uh, people that won't step forward and do what needs to be done. And so I applaud you for what you have done up to this point. So. Wish you the best of luck. Yes. Well, I do too. Any other questions before we move on? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, this uh, Saturday, August 23rd, uh, we've had something come up here that the, uh, there's going to be a veterans motorcycle rally. Uh, David Schaefer's <coughs> in the back of the room there. David, if you don't mind standing up and telling us a little bit about what's going to happen Saturday. The reason that we're putting it up tonight is because it just it kind of popped up here and he didn't have time to schedule it and get it on the street and sewer committee's agenda, but he wanted to let us know what's going on and I think it's something we should support. Go ahead, David. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, all of you. Uh, this weekend is going to be the 11th annual uh, Veterans Benefit and Appreciation Run. Uh, it's going to start off here uh, at the American Legion. What we would like to do, what we're asking uh, City of Taylor for, is to block off that section of road right there, so 100 west block of uh, Franklin. Just block that off from the hours of 1030 until noon, so that way we can get approximately 150 to 200 motorcycles lined up in there. Uh, this is, uh, more than anything, it's a safety thing, because uh, at 12 o'clock when we take off, uh, what I've seen in the past few years is motorcycles are coming from every direction trying to get into two lines. Um, when I was down in Morrisonville a few weeks ago, uh, Natalie Goble uh, Memorial Run, they closed off an entire section of road, had everything lined up, and it went out very smoothly. Uh, we were only approached, uh, I'm the president and founder of DFW Riders here in Taylorville. The American Legion approached us uh, approximately three weeks ago and asked us to, uh, to actually put on the actual run on the route. Um, I've already uh, spoke with the Chief of Police. He's going to help us out getting across major intersections such as 29. Great. Um, so that's the only thing. Uh, okay. uh, Alderman Walters. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I received this phone call from uh, uh, Mr. Schaefer on Friday afternoon late. And in the meantime, I, as you can read the, the, the note from me, gentlemen, I spoke with the businesses along there and the, the uh, Memorial Home Services is not open on Saturday. But the County Probation Office is not open on Saturday. The Shadow Home is temporarily closed for remodeling. I talked with Amy Hagen from U.S. Bank and explained what the, this gentleman would like to accomplish for the veterans, and she was okay uh, with that. So I'm asking uh, 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 Superintendent Wiseman to take some barricades down there. The way this will work, uh, Mr. Schaefer, to take some barricades down there on Friday because our people don't work on Saturday. It'll be your responsibility, your group, to put those barricades across uh, East Franklin Street at Maine and East Franklin Street at Washington, and also uh, on the exit ramp that comes out of the bank. And then when they when, when they, they pull off from there, they <coughs> take them aside and set them at the curb. And that way we know that we've got the, the safety of the citizens uh, taken care of. Understood, sir. Uh, with that as well, uh, I did speak with my officers uh, and we will be putting out that day uh, to please remind everybody to keep the noise down on the motorcycles until we get out to the outside of town as respect to not only the people who live in that area but to the township as well. We appreciate one, I, that. One final thing, I, when I talked with Mr. Schaefer, I said, uh, if you continue to do this, uh, explain to him what the proper procedure would be, and he said he would have no problem with complying with that next year. So we'll have this go through the regular channels. Thank you. And I wanted to thank uh, Alderman uh, Jones uh, because uh, uh, Alderman Bruce Jones referred him to me to, to get this taken care of. Any other questions regarding this? No, thank you very much. Uh, Rocky? Yeah, as you know, you can't take any action on their request this evening, right. but you, with your executive powers, can, can make that order uh, to your superintendent, and then on your next agenda, you can either chastise his actions or <laughs> make a motion to ratify what yeah. he did. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we'll go. Any other uh, questions for me before we move on to committee reports? Okay, committee reports. Discussions and or motions to approve, <coughs> adopt, and or deny, <coughs> and or table, and or amend, and are referred to an appropriate committee in whole or in part the matters regarding the following subject matters discussed at the committee level. And we start off with personnel committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
We had several motions, as you can see, coming out of the uh, personnel committee meeting. The first is a motion to bid and or advertise the office level one position <coughs> in the treasurer's office. I'll offer that motion with a comment. Okay, you have a second? Second. Alderman Coons, go ahead with a comment. Alderman Heverly. Uh, this opening comes up, as you probably all are aware, because of a bid that was awarded to an individual. And she moved out of that department. Any other questions? Roll call. Mark Goodwin. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Coons. Yes. Mark Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Ray Bud. Yes. Tom Bertle. Yes. Ray Martinez. Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Next, we had a motion to bid and or advertise the office level three position in the police department and allow the replacement to begin 30 days prior to the retirement date. Okay. And uh, off that motion with a comment. Okay. You have a second? Second. Alderman Bertle, go ahead with a comment, Alderman Heffley. And this uh, retirement is, is probably coming up sometime in, in October. Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Kuntz. Yes. Martin Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Ray Budd. Yes. Tom Bertle. Yes. Ray Martinez. Yes. Mark Heffley. Yes. Motion passes 8-0. to zero. Next, we had a mission, uh, motion to bid and or advertise the deputy treasurer position if and when the need arises. I'll offer that motion with a comment. Okay, got a second on that. Second. Alderman second. Bud, go ahead with a comment, Alderman Heverly. Uh, just for, for timing purposes and, and just because of the, uh, uh, the, the position itself, if uh, depending on some, some bid and some awards, we, we might have a timing position to where we would need to bid this position uh, uh, when the council uh, out of schedule. So we just offered it tonight. Any other questions? Just comment. Alderman Bud. <coughs> uh, I know this is a touchy situation and we've discussed this many times over the past several years I've been on council uh, deputy treasurer and deputy <coughs> clerk formerly at one time used to be a non bargaining unit position <coughs> and with the responsibilities of that position uh, I think it might be justified to discuss in, in future negotiations the possibility of, of returning those to a management position as these positions both of those the deputy treasurer and the deputy clerk are the responsible uh, position and person to take over for the clerk or treasurer should something befall them, bad health, death, whatever. And they need to step into that position and not have to worry about the union coming back and saying this is not right. That I think we need to actually look at transitioning back to the way it was prior mm -hmm. to this current situation. Just wanted that uh, on record. And uh, I will support th this motion going forward, but I think that's something we do need to take seriously and, and, and review. If I might, Mr. Mayor. Um, th this particular contract will open up in 2016, and we can make that an agenda item. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Ray Coons. Yes. Martin Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Ray Budd. Yes. Tom Bertle. Yes. Ernie Martinez. Yes. Mark Heavily. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Next, we had a motion to bid and or advertise the working foreman position in the street department and offer that as a motion with a okay. comment. Second on that. Second, second. Alderman Walters, go ahead with a comment. Alderman um, Heberly. At the committee meeting the other night uh, when this motion was, was discussed, I, I offered this, uh, this motion up with a great deal of reluctance. And uh, at the committee level, I did vote in approval of this. But Tonight, I, I will not be supporting this motion um, for a variety of reasons. Some are the same as what I mentioned the other night. Um, this is not a criticism of uh, Superintendent Wiseman, but we certainly have some, some issues in the street department. Uh, this position in particular has been one of the most difficult ones to fill for a variety of reasons. Uh, when I first came on the council, it was purely financial, but uh, in, in the past few times that we have filled it, uh, we, we, this last individual, um, I, I believe he just got run off the job. Um, and in our union management meetings, we had discussions on this, and, and we thought that we had brought it to a close as far as what the union was going to uh, uh, accept back in August of 2013. Uh, the job description clearly says that this position will have super supervisory responsibilities and it wasn't until we read the first sentence in the job description that the union recognized that that was a role and a responsibility for this position and they said they would accept that 
but the actions and activities in that department to this particular position has been quite contrary. And um, Mr. Voda just spoke of the need to uh, take a look at two other positions, but this position in particular, uh, with the difficulties that we have, uh, I, I just, uh, I'm not gonna support the motion. Um, I, I really wish that we could get another position down in the street department until we get this satisfied, but uh, I believe that we again need to take up discussions with the union in making this a non-bargaining position. Thank you. No comments? I'll on just uh, repeat exactly <coughs> what Alderman Heberton stated, and, and I guess my concern is, again, not to belittle <coughs> anybody who fills the position because it is a responsibility that, that few people want to take, and that's supervisor. The, the biggest headache I have with, with the uh, working foreman position is you have a union personnel supervising union personnel and how do you discipline a fellow union brother while you're in a position of foreman I mean I, it, it's a very difficult and touchy situation that if if the individual who fills that position is not driven to move on to the superintendent's position he's most likely going to back off any of the uh, supervisory and, and and required disciplinary areas that he's going to have to fill in that position. So I, I think I th that's another one that I think we, we need to revisit and see if that can be uh, can be brought back as a uh, management position and, and appointed mm -hmm. by the mayor. Alderman Walters. Uh, thank you. Uh, I agree that uh, some of the uh, issues brought up this evening do have some, somewhat have some merit, but in the meantime, realistically, we need some help in that department. Superintendent Wiseman does need a working foreman, and we have those in the other departments. We can't expect to be down there all the time, day and night, 365, and think of vacations or anything else. So we need a working foreman down there. So we can address this issue maybe in the future. But right now, we need to move forward with this and, and go ahead and put this out for bid so we can get someone in there, hopefully, or advertise on the outside to give <coughs> somewhat some relief to Superintendent Wiseman. Alderman Heverly. Well, on a temporary basis, <coughs> I think that uh, Superintendent Wiseman already has appointed his working foreman from the sewer department to help him out in the street department. And it's my understanding that, that he's doing a, a good job in that position for a short period of time. Um, th these are not only personnel issues, but I mean, they're really, it, it's a work performance issue also. Um, we, we just finished West Park Avenue. And, and, and because we didn't have the correct and proper oversight, we might have to redo that thing next year. And, and that literally takes money out of next year's uh, ward money for streets to redo something that we've already paid for. I mean, it, it not only is a personnel issue, but it's a monetary issue. And, and we just keep kicking the can down the street and, and perhaps it's just time to, to take a look at this position and just, and just put some earnest effort into making it what it should be, and that's non-bargaining. Thank you. All right, any other comments before we take a vote? Roll call, please. Martin Voda. No. Bill Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ernie Gortinez. Yes. Doug Heverly. No. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Coon. Yes. Motion passes six to two. <coughs> and the last motion is a motion to accept the proposed police wage agreement, and I offer that motion with comment. Second. Second by Alderman Bertle. Go ahead with your comment, Alderman Heberling. I made these same comments at the uh, committee uh, meeting the other night. <coughs> uh, I, I believe that it took us uh, perhaps about four meetings this time to uh, come to an agreement, proposed agreement. Um, I just wanted to thank publicly the negotiating team for the police union. Not only was there two officers at the table, but they also uh, invited some of the younger guys uh, to come and just watch how these negotiating sessions um, work. And, and we always had at least three additional officers there. And it, it just really provides a great avenue to where not one person controls that negotiating process. And if something awry happens, there are at least witnesses to the fact this is why that happened or this is why something else happened or this is why and how we got to where we got. Uh, the proposed offer is 4.2% over two years, 
Uh, we started out uh, with just a wage opener for one year, but we negotiated to where well, this takes in the remaining two years of the contract. Um, it actually works out to where that 4.2, if, if you follow the numbers through, it, it works out to 3.93% uh, um, increase just because we're not doing some compounding on that second year, which if you break it down on a yearly basis, that's about 1.9% per year. Um, fairly close to what we did with the fire, but I offer that motion. Um, thank you. All right, any other questions? Yeah, well, we already got the second, so go ahead with the comment you've got. I said in committee, you know, I've had the privilege of writing with some police officers from time to time, and I, th I think this, uh, this is a, a fair and uh, well-deserved uh, pay raise for them. Um, I've got to see some of the issues they have to deal with on a daily basis, and, uh, you know, I, I think we need to really commend our force because not, not every city has, a, has a, a group of individuals like we do, and you know, I'd like to really com commend them for what they do. Thank you. Anyone else before we vote? Roll call, please. Earl Walters. Yes. Mary Bud. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ernie Martinez. Yes. Rob Peverly. Yes. Dave Jones. Yes. Ray Cook. Yes. Martin Bowden. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Bring us to Emergency Services Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's one motion that came out of the Emergency Services Committee meeting, and that motion was to allow police department to proceed <coughs> with phase one to begin the creation of a new training and firearm range uh, beginning in disorder, surveying the property, uh, then fencing in a berm, and then in a rock for a parking lot. I'd like to make that in the motion. Second. Second, Alderman Jones. Discussion or comment? Roll call, please. Mary Bud. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ernie Martinez. Yes. Rob Peverly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Cook. Yes. Martin Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Moving on to Water Environmental Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. There was uh, two motions that came out of the Water Environmental Committee meeting. First motion was to approve the payment of $7,532.57 to Trico Equipment for repairs to the Ford 8770 tractor. And I'd like to make that in the form of a motion. Okay. We have a second on that. Second. Second by Alderman Walters. Discussion or comment? Roll call. John Bertle. Yes. Ernie Martinez. Yes. Rob Peverly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Cook. Yes. Martin Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Mary Budd. Yes. That motion passes 8 to 0. Uh, motion to approve payment of $5,074.52 <coughs> to Blueville Garage for repairs to the 2003 International <coughs> Dump Truck. I'd like to make that in the form of motion. Second by Alderman Walters. Discussion or comment? Roll call. Ernie Martinez. Yes. Rob Heverly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Cook. Yes. Martin Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Mary Bud. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Moving on to Lake Airport Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. We had several motions come out of the uh, last Lake and Airport Committee meeting, the first of which is a motion to approve the Mid-America Sports Parachute Club Parachute Boogie to be held at the Taylorville Municipal Airport on August 15th through 17th upon approval of the special events permit and receipt of correct certificate of insurance forms for the Cessna Caravan and the hot air balloon. Your Honor, those certificates were received Friday, uh, and they, I may just say that the uh, event was held once we confirmed that, so I'd like to make that in the form of a motion, Mr. Mallory. Okay. <coughs> Are you a second on that? Second. Alderman Heberling, discussion or comment? Roll call. Rob Heberling. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Cook. Yes. Mark Boda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Mary Budd. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ernie Martinez. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Uh, the next motion was to select the gold level plan for the annual service agreement with QT Technologies Fueling Terminal at a cost of $995. <coughs> Place that in the form of a motion, Your Honors. Okay. Second. 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 Alderman Walters, discussion and comment? Roll call. Bruce Jones? Yes. Ray Cook? Yes. Martin Boda? Yes. Earl Walters? Yes. Mary Budd? Yes. John Bertle? Yes. Ernie Martinez? Yes. Rob Heverly? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Okay, then we had a motion to renew the contract with Rick and Lisa Champley to lease mutually agreed property located in Section 23, Township 12 North, Range 2 West of the 3rd Principal Meridian, Christian County, Illinois, commencing on October 1st, 2014, and terminating September 30th, 2016, and the lease be amended accordingly due to current conditions. Okay, I get a second on that? Second. Alderman Bertle, discussion or comment? And Alderman if voted. I may I believe the attorney wanted to have a comment on that before we vote. I'd like to chat on that for a minute or two here. It, whether you decide to go with uh, renew the lease is, of course, your decision. When I reviewed the lease, and this I wasn't your city attorney when this lease was done in 2012, 
the governing statute that applies to the city, and you want to lease real estate that you own, if you find that it, uh, you, you've got that power up to 99 years, if you, if you take a proper vote by two-thirds of the uh, uh, city council, including the mayor, as long as you find that the property is uh, not no longer profitable for city or simply it's in the best interest of the city to do so. But any time that you have enter into a lease um, that uh, would exceed 20 years, and if you look at the Champley lease, it is written that it's an automatic renewal every two years, which in my mind violates the spirit of that statute. It's an ad infinitum lease until someone wants to terminate it on 60-day notice. The kicker is that if, you, if, if the lease is interpreted as such, any lease over 20 years you must go out for bids for, okay? And it wasn't done in this case. And, uh, it, but the statute does provide any lease that's two years or less, as long as you folks approve it by two-thirds vote, you don't need to have uh, a bidding process on it. So if you want to go forward with this, my suggestion is this, that your motion should be is to exercise your right to terminate the lease, 60-day notice. Let's redo a new lease for them. Uh, for just a two-year term, whatever uh, amount. Looking at your minutes, it, it, we know that this is property subject to the Ameren easement. You're going to be giving a, an easement that you're going to be covenanting and warranting that you have quite, they're going to have quite enjoyment and they're going to be able to use that area. You can't do that if you allow it, lease it to somebody else. So your lease with Champley has to be subject to that particular instrument. We have learned through Mr. Giannazzi that uh, that's going to trigger real estate taxes. Under the current lease that you have with them, the city was obligated to pay the real estate taxes. The lease that, at least that you know, I negotiated what you did with Barlow last year, uh, the Barlows have to pay the real estate taxes if, in fact, there are any assessed, and it is for just a two-year term. Since you've had a number of discussions on the committee level that if you choose to lease other hunting ground to be consistent, perhaps, just a suggestion. We went through a number of bullet points that should be included in these hunting leases. My thought would be that if you choose to continue this with Champley, that that lease should likewise be subject to the same bullet points, at least the committee approved at that level. So uh, that's my thought. I, I think you um, vote to give the notice to terminate, and then we could re, re uh, put something together that everyone's going to be pleased with. But it, what you've got right now, I don't think is legal. Uh, Alderman Walters. So to clarify that, if we terminate uh, the current uh, the lease as it is now, and we come back with a new lease, then we wouldn't have to bid that, right? If you do it for just two years or less. For two years, okay. You bet. All right. Okay, now. Because <coughs> this, the other lease, it was, that lease could have lasted 200 years, the way okay, it was written. Okay, now, to move this along, if I amend the motion, and add and recommendations of the city attorney. Can we continue to move on and incorporate what your uh, directives are if without having to take this back to committee and reapprove a new motion? If new everyone's motion. okay with that, sure. Just terminate it, give me directions to put something together along the lines of what I talked about here, and then you can take a vote on it next, uh, next council meeting if you want to bypass the committee level, which you can do. Are, are you done? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Well, uh, the night of the meeting, Rick was there, yep. and he was talking about some coupons he put in for dove hunting, which is coming up pretty quick. Right. So if we give him a 60-day notice that we're going to terminate his lease, we're going to rework a new lease, where is that going to leave him as far? Is that going to leave him in limbo as far as using the property for what he's already done the work to do? To Very good question, work? but I think that if, if, you're, if you folks are going to go forward with that leasing project, we formally give the 60-day notice to terminate. We can come back and have an agreement that basically says, okay, that prior lease is null and void, and these are the new terms, keep on marching. Yeah. I just okay. don't want to leave him hanging out there. Exactly. But we have to do something here to terminate, <coughs> I think, or otherwise you've got, otherwise, if you don't do the termination, then it's gonna go two years now, more, and we've got an uh, amber and easement that we got to deal with. And they're not going to be happy with that if, if, if we give a lease on property that we're just going to get an easement. Do we need to include that in the motion then that we're going to allow Mr. Champley to continue on until the new lease is yeah. finalized? Or we well, no, 60 day notice to mm -hmm. terminate, you, you, you've got to, you got 60 days. At least then terminate for 60 days. Yeah, 60 days, yeah. It doesn't seem like we move that fast. 
He said it's gonna be, he says it's going to be done in two weeks. I'm not. I'm not pointing finger at you. I'm just saying normally we don't yeah, move yeah. extremely fast. What do you want? You want me to <laughs> cut my finger here? Okay. Okay. Blood on hang on. on. <laughs> Alderman Voda. The, the, gentlemen, the, the reason this is on this evening's city council is because we have the 60-day window, and that's what the mayor and I talked about because we thought that we were going to have to terminate the lease because of the Amarin issue. Okay. With that said, we have the 60-day window to write the letter, at the same time be able to redraft a lease for two years within that 60-day window, which will allow this to roll through <coughs> and, uh, like, like nothing ever happened. But we will be sitting in a, shall we say, uh, the driver's seat. Non-litigation situation. Sure. Okay. And the mayor can write the letter tomorrow mm -hmm. and do it, and uh, uh, we can put something together. And it, looking at the committee minute notes, it looked like Mr. Champley was willing to work with a different area mm -hmm. to avoid that easement area. So this is not going to come mm -hmm. any surprise to him, I wouldn't think. And uh, the bullet points, uh, that's just something that everyone's going to have to live with if you decide to lease other property. It should be consistent, don't you think? I agree. But that's your vote. You guys decide that. You just direct me and I will sure. go a certain <coughs> way. Okay. So what, what language do we need to use here to amend the, the uh, current motion? Motion to direct the mayor to um, provide the appropriate 60-day notice to terminate the Rick and Lisa Champley lease on the subject property and to direct the city attorney to prepare a, uh, a new two-year lease for this property with language um, that will include the bullet points previously discussed at committee, provide that the uh, uh, tenants will pay any real estate taxes, and such other terms and conditions as the city attorney may recommend to the council for consideration. Do you the have all that, Pam? <laughs> 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 the, the, the only concern I have on that, I mean, I wonder if we should just get est estimate tax and do that because the tax are always the year after. So you could have a situation, I guess, couldn't you, where, you know, after the fact. Uh, the Barlow lease reads that it, it, they're responsible for any taxes assessed, if any. Okay. Okay. So you keep in mind, taxes are always a year late for well, payable yeah. terms. Right. So it's likely that if it had not been taxed, uh, 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 assessed for 2014, it's unlikely right. that 2015 you're going to have a bill for it. Right. But that's not our call. Sure. So if, if the county treasurer's office decides to impose a tax, then all I'm saying is then the tenant has to pay for it, not the city. Sure. But I'm saying if, if they don't renew, for example, you have a new owner coming up and and so so the, the existing one that decides not to renew well still owe taxes a year from now because they're a year late you see what i'm saying is that is that they would still owe it sure okay and yeah. we just because trust the, them the, the the tax becomes a lien on january 1st of 2014 mm -hmm. but that lien is not payable until probably july and september 2015. Sure. you're getting charged for the <coughs> usage of that property for 2014 Sure. as a private use versus a public use. Sure. So yes, if I'm a, a tenant of that property for that year, that document means that when the taxes come due, the city can go back to the, that tenant and say, now pay us for that. Okay. So I'm sure we understood that. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Heberly. <coughs> did the, the bullet po points on the proposed lease, did it limit the number of participants to three? I don't have those bullet points on, but mm -hmm. there was some restriction. It's a good question. And if, if that's the case, I, I believe this th this lease area is being used for youth hunts, mm -hmm. and I don't I, I, I don't know how many kids mm -hmm. that, that Ricky was going to have. I think it was two. 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 So yeah. we're okay there. Yeah, I think right. we did that. All right. Yeah. Okay. But if, if we can go back to the the tax, would it be would it be more would it be better to state in there that the the city will be responsible for the real estate taxes, uh, will pay the real estate taxes out of the revenues received from the lease 
as opposed to try and sit here and monitor who owns what as we go down this route. I, I don't I know. I mean, that's your call. I mean, if you mm -hmm. want to, uh, in other words, see, what you don't know, and, and Mike couldn't give us that that evening, is what are the taxes going to be? Right. He gave us some parameters. Mm -hmm. He gave us some estimates. Um, and then you, I think you were talking in the committee level at that time, well, we'll adjust our rent upwards to cover those anticipated taxes to do just exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing, which is a practical approach to it. Um, so you can go either way with that. You may get short change on one end, or you may get uh, have enough money to make a little profit. Okay. Because this is kind of a first for his office, I yeah. thought, and he hadn't really done the formula and the math on it. But I didn't think it was a whole lot of huh. dollars and cents what we're talking right about. A couple hundred bucks at best, right. I thought, yeah. for an 80 acre track. Maybe. Okay, Alderman Villa, we do amend your initial uh, motion to cover what the city attorney has. I, I have no <laughs> problem with amending the motion at all. Would you like it repeated? No. No. <laughs> well, you probably can't, but I'm sure the uh, clerk yeah. could if she had to, but I'm not going to ask her to at this time. Right. Alderman Burley, you amend your second? I'll amend second. <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. Red Boots. Yes. Martin Voda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. Tom Bertle. Yes. Linda Gortinez. Yes. Rob Kimberly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Uh, final motion to come out of the committee was a motion to seek bids for leasing of four parcels of farmland around Lake Tiggerville for the 2015, 2016, and 2017 crop years. Uh, these parcels are not limited to any specific crop. I'll place that in the form of a motion, Your Honor. I'll okay. second that with a comment. Second, Mama Walters. Go ahead with your comment. Uh, as for me, Yes, it was. Address. I followed it the next day also. Okay. But that is not that is not these this this property <coughs> that we're looking at right now. Oh, okay. It's a different parcel. Oh, okay. it's, it's I not one of the four. Right. It's not one of the four that we're talking I, about. I don't believe it was. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Roll call. Martin Voda. Yes. Earl Walters. Yes. Larry Bud. Yes. Tom Bertle. Yes. Rudy Gortinez. Yes. Rob Kimberly. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Boots. Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Next, we have a motion to approve and or ratify payment of bills Before in the amount of two. Alderman um, Jones. I, I, when I was going through the, my packet, I noticed that I was not uh, listed as a, the one of the attendees at that Lake Airport committee meeting. Yeah. Okay. Just like to have that. Okay. Correct that one. Thank you. Does that mean you didn't count? <laughs> I didn't vote. Okay. All right. But I was there. All right, let's go to the final motion, hopefully. Thank you. <laughs> motion to approve and ratify <laughs> payment of bills in the amount of $263,399.19. Take that for me. <coughs> Alderman Budd, can I get a second? Oh, yeah. Alderman Bertle, go ahead, Alderman Budd. Fuel, $29,341. Electric, $18,965.65. Telephone, $2,941.24. Garbage, $1,310. Office supplies, $1,038.68. Big R Urban Ace Rons Miscellaneous, $2,699.59. Larry, Larry Berry for sales tax re and real estate tax rebate, $5,009.56. U.S. Bank for Miscellaneous, $2,445.09. Attorney fees, and this is uh, other attorney fees also, $2,181.75. Green and Bradford. 46,366.48. Illinois Department of Revenue for fuel sales, 2,355. Unique Temporary Services, 2,958.56. MFT for Illinois Valley Paving, this is Lakeshore Drive and the Cherokee uh, Street Water Break, 13,470.45. Lewis Marsh, 30,578.20. Rush Truck Centers for Maintenance, 2,999.80. Police and Fire Commission for testing and ads, 3,938.85. Police Department for Keesler's uh, Police Supply for Ammo, 4,014. Fire Department, Max Fire and Safety for the hose for the T1, 4,890. ATI Services of Illinois for maintenance services, 9,707.03. Street Department, Walker Company. This is to Till Park Avenue and Franklin Streets, 4,407.41. Bill Tolis Excavating, 2,438.20. Sewer Department, J.F. Cody for supplies, 4,322.77.
Van de Vetter Engineering Spillway Maintenance and Repairs, 5,847.71. Water Department Chemicals, 13,251.35. Midwest Meter for Supplies and Maintenance, 12,664.66. Thomas Printing for Bill Laser, uh, 1,327.35. Airport Crawford Murphy and Tilly, this is the taxiway extension. 11,515.01. Cemetery Adams and Masterson, 1,916.16. For a total of these of 244,901.55. Thank you. Alderman Jones. Two comments. On page 9, <coughs> under general corporate health and safety, there's an amount of six cents for Computer Techniques Incorporated. Was that a misprint? No. I didn't think that it was, no. but I had to ask. Um, and I don't know where it went, but it was, I know. Four ninety-five is what it is a month for him, but somehow they gave a, him a credit for four dollars and some odd cents and left six cents on the bill. Okay. So. And then my. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the stamps I, forty cents. I, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, the other thing <laughs> I had was on page one under Green and Bradford Incorporated. The first thing, other professional under building collapse. Um, Apparently we used Joe Green for something on this. Mm -hmm. uh, Initially we had him come up and take a look at it. Uh, obviously uh, when we were first notified of it that day, we needed someone to come up there and give us an opinion on where the perimeters would be set up and everything else and, and not knowing how quickly they would have their people there. I, mean, I called on Joe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Earl Walters. Yes. Sir Dunn. Yes. Tom Bertel. Yes. Ray Dorkman. Yes. Bob Hemmerling. Yes. Bruce Jones. Yes. Ray Kurtz. Yes. Martin Bowden. Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Okay. For subparagraph G of 5 ILCS 120-2.06, this portion of the City Council meeting is reserved for any person wishing to address the Council on any relevant subject matters concerning the City. Would anyone in the audience like to address the Council? Seeing no uh, further items on the agenda, I'd entertain a motion so to adjourn this meeting. Second. Alderman Jones, second by Alderman Voda. Discussion or comment? Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Meeting adjourned 8 17 p.m. <laughs>